if you ask scientists about time, I think you'll get uh, three descriptions. Number one, there is, of course, the obvious uh, psychological time. And that is a reflection of our internal dialogue. So if you're in a hurry, <clears throat> if you have many deadlines, if your internal dialogue <clears throat> says, uh, I'm running out of time, then your biological clock will speed up and uh, you will experience high levels of adrenaline, cortisol, jittery platelets that huddle together because they're a bit scared. And then that could lead to inflammation, heart attack, etc. So your internal dialogue that I'm running out of time or I don't have time actually uh, leads to running out of time. When you suddenly drop dead of a heart attack, then you have run out of time. So um, this is uh, uh, how we run out of time with what is called time sickness. But we also know other experiences of time, right? You say the beauty of the mountain was breathtaking. Time stood still. When the dancer and the dance became one, time stood still. It's peak performance in sports, time stands still. An athlete sees everything in slow motion, can't even hear the sound in that peak moment, which we call flow. So time can stop still when the lover and the beloved become one, when the musician and the music become one, when the dancer and the dance become one, when the seer and the scenery become one, when the observer and the observed become one, when the knower and the known become one. Time stops for that whatever period, but it's not a period. So we know that internal dialogue is related to the experience of time. There is dream time at night when time is very fuzzy. And then there is no time when uh, we have uh, deep sleep because deep sleep is a state of non-local awareness where uh, there is no more subject object split and there's no movement of the internal dialogue. So we have stories, mythical stories, like um, you know, the Sleeping Beauty, who didn't age all those years when she was asleep. We have stories of Shangri-La, where their collective consciousness is in peak flow, and there is zero stress, and therefore least entropy, and therefore no time or slow time. The mythical story of Shangri-La. Okay. Sleeping Beauty, the frog that became the prince, etc., etc., all indicate the psychological flow of time. So then, of course, there is what we call the um, thermodynamic view of time. The time is uh, a result of the laws of entropy, the laws of thermodynamics, and that entropy creates the arrow of time, which always moves in a in one direction even though in quantum mechanics time can flow in two directions in any case that's the thermodynamic arrow of time and that is entropy entropy then there's something called cosmological time related to the rate of expansion of the universe so with that cosmological time the the planet is now 4 billion years old, the universe 13.8 billion years old, and the universe is expanding. The space between galaxies is expanding faster than the speed of light, cosmological time. Why did Einstein say that time is a persistent illusion? Well, he was talking about two kinds of time. So one is uh, in three-dimensional space-time. There is the experience of the flow of time. Right now, I'm in three-dimensional space-time. This subject, if this is the subject, is in this three-dimensional space, experiencing the flow of time. I have to catch a flight at such and such time. But in four-dimensional space-time, which is a truer picture of nature, 
past, future, and present um, uh, have equal ontological status, which means they all exist simultaneously in the deeper reality that we call four-dimensional space-time. There are other dimensions where time would be a completely different experience, although for the person having that experience, it would seem totally normal. And of course, because uh, insects and, and other species process uh, photons and information in photons at different uh, rates, they're, from a human perspective, they have different experiences of time, although from the species perspective, normal time. Okay, now where is all this leading us? In, in the Yoga Vishishta, there's an expression, time is the consumer and we are its food. We are time's food. So this body and even the mind is the metabolism of time. And uh, aging is the metabolism of time. I wrote a book many years ago called Ageless Body, Timeless Mind. And that was based on the Vedic and yogic understanding that we have three bodies. So we have the physical body, uh, physical body, matter, energy. It's called sthula sharir, vital energy, prana, physical body. And that's in time. Okay. It's the regular time that we experience. Then we have a subtle body, mind, intellect, and ego that uh, we can change our experience of time by shifting in awareness um, and uh, interpreting experience in a different way. And also being mindful, metacognition, being the silent witness of all there is, and uh, also the silent witness of sensations, images, feelings, thoughts, and the silent witness of volition, which is called metacognition. Observe yourself having a sensory experience and observing yourself making a choice, metacognition, mindfulness will slow down the experience of time, but will not get rid of it. So uh, time will slow down with meditative practices. Now we know telomerase increases, genes um, are uh, self-regulating through epigenetic mechanisms, etc., cetera, etc., cetera in meditative states and also in mindfulness and metacognition. But then there is something called samadhi. Samadhi is uh, when the observer and the observed and the process of observation, the knower, the knowing and the known, the seer, the seeing and the scenery, the seer, the seeing and the scenery all um, resolve or collapse into a singularity. That experience is called samadhi. Samadhi means that the observer, the process of knowing and the observed are one. And then there is no time, zero time, least entropy and no aging. That's called the causal body, causal body. And so the causal body, which is um, jiva, the, the awareness with the seeds of memory and desire, jiva, atman, um, even minus the seeds of memory and desire, soul is there as pure awareness, pure potentiality. And then Brahman, cosmic consciousness, which is differentiating into all modes of knowing in every species, all knowers and all things known all within itself collapses in samadhi into a singularity. And this is called the samhita of Rishi Devita Chandas. Samhita means the togetherness of the observer, the observing and the object observed all within itself. Self-interaction of pure consciousness. <clears throat> this terminology uh, Rishi Devata and Chandas was imparted to me by my teacher, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. So what does this all mean ultimately? Ultimately, it means that um, all time is 
in consciousness. Doesn't matter. Cosmic time is conceived in consciousness through observations that are made in consciousness, through experiments and telescopes and instruments designed in human consciousness and extending the range of human experience. Cosmological time is conceived, constructed in human consciousness. So too, when we go to the microscopic level, at the quantum level, and that uh, experience of uh, the resolution of uh, um, observation into a singularity with the observer and the process of observation and uh, the observed, so-called, all fused into samadhi or transcendence or singularity, time doesn't exist. <clears throat> So let us look at some examples of frozen time, seeds. An acorn can lie dormant um, for centuries, but then when it's put into fertilized um, environment or soil, it becomes an oak tree. And that's true of many seeds. You can freeze them, you can store them away for thousands of years, and the seeds of memory, the mechanics, memory means the genetics and the epigenetics that will take the memory of the past and recreate the same experience in the future is there in the seed, is there in the seed. These days people freeze uh, their um, um, eggs and uh, not only freeze the eggs, they fertilize the egg and then they freeze it and you can freeze uh, frozen fertilized egg, or you can create a frozen fertilized egg, put it in, in a frozen environment, and then 20 years later, you can implant it in an um, uterus, and uh, you'll get a baby 20 years from now of a baby that was actually a fertilized egg or a seed right now, 20 years later, 30 years later, can sprout so that baby could be the grandfather of other uh, adults born um, uh, with the same sperm and egg um, previously. Okay, so you can have a baby that is the grandparent of an adult. This is uh, now all possible, which means we can decrease entropy uh, through reducing temperature and then we can freeze time itself and the expressions of time itself. But we can also actually go back uh, to the source of every experience, the source of every sense experience, every sound, every sensation, every color, every shape, every taste, every smell, every thought, every feeling, every emotion, every image. When you go back to the source, then it's the same source, pure consciousness, and there is no time. So the experience of time is a human creation, the way we experience it. We uh, can only guess what other creatures experience as time, but they do not have the ability, I believe, to, uh, to get to the source um, of all experience, which is called self-realization, a privilege that happens to be an evolutionary advantage that human consciousness has. So my friends, with all this, there is actually the possibility of um, creating a body that reflects the causal body, the seed body, uh, which is the seed of karma, memory, and desire, just like the acorn. And once we go back through uh, transcendence and understand that we can experience pure consciousness, then we are actually um, connecting with the causal body. And the causal body can have the seeds of memory and desire and experience to recreate the physical body, but the causal body itself is timeless in relatively in the way that seeds are, the seeds of expression. And seeds in turn are just memories of past um, ability 
to manifest in its form and phenomena. The seed of an apple tree is um, programmed with the memory of how to create apples. And in every seed is the promise of thousands of forests, infinite number of forests, theoretically, in one seed. So too, in every, every um, source of every experience is the seed of innumerable manifestations as form and phenomena. And who or what is doing that is consciousness. Consciousness is conceiving, constructing, governing, and becoming the experience of time. And furthermore, human consciousness can manipulate or control the arrow of time to create relatively an ageless body, a timeless mind, and thus increase lifespan and health span, should that be an aspiration. This is how human aging and the arrow of time are related. I hope this was useful. I, I practice some of these techniques myself, including vagal activation, which stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system, which actually counteracts the entropy of sympathetic overdrive as a result of stress in the world. Stress is resistance to existence, which creates time. And flow is transcendence. Transcendence. No resistance to existence. And that is the state we all would want to be in, in peak performance, peak living, and flow, minimizing the entropy caused by the arrow of time. Okay, my friends, have a good time. Or no time. Mm -hmm.